Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. I'm your host Kevin, and this is our late 1960s Haggy High Tractor Sprayer that we revived after sitting 20 years in a shed. And today, we're going to go spray the field with it. All right, as you can see, we've got the Haggy sprayer down to the farm, and it's time to get this thing prepped to go into the field. Nothing has changed since we last saw this on camera. Uh, our tire's gone flat once again. Oh, I did take the solenoid off, so you go get a new one in town today. But other than that, it is exactly as we saw it last time. We've got a whole bunch of fittings we need to fix on our booms. We're missing all the filters, nozzles, and caps. Uh, we have no idea if the tank holds anything. We have no idea if the water pump works we know the hydraulics work we know the engine runs we've got a few hydraulic lines to replace and we need to probably figure out something a little more permanent for a fuel system than a bucket hanging off the side of it so without further ado let's dive into this and get this sucker fixed up as is tradition we gotta get this sucker done because guess what's on the horizon once again it said rain you guessed it in fact it literally just started sprinkling the corn's in so that's not such a big deal but the big thing is that there's a certain window we need to spray our fertilizer and pre-emergent on after the corn's planted. That's about three days, and today's day two of that three days. So the clock's a ticking once again. It's a high lift on a high tractor. High chance of me dying. On the short list of stuff we don't have, tubes is number one. I went to Dyson's and they didn't have crap. So we're gonna. We're going to hit this with the old tire slime and see what happens. Maybe we'll just make the tire tubeless with the slime. you never know. You can guess, no, but you'll never know. If this works, I'll be very amazed. I mean, we've seen this do some crazy shit before, like, you know, fix all the wheels on the planter. Hope that does it, because that's all we got. I guess the cost of farming every year is one jug of tire repair. That might have done it. <laughs> I had to go get more, but it may have sealed that tire up. Rain has just begun, Jesse. I'm trying to get the solenoid hooked up still. I had to relocate it because as you can see, the old mounting place, not really much left there anymore. Um, <laughs> so for any of you guys out there that are farmers and have this style solenoid, two front posts and an input output, or even just one front post, uh, and you're looking to get one, if you go down to any parts store, I went to O'Reilly's, ask for a Ford starter solenoid from like 73 to 79, that's what that is. Today we have sandpaper. I hope this makes a big difference. Last time all we had was a shingle. <laughs> this should be the ticket. Come on, you old pile of trash. No, it does not move. I might need a shot of brake clean. <laughs> Must need to sand it a little more. God dang, dude. The smoke coming out, it's another weird thing. Oh, I missed. I'd say let's not focus on this for now, let's get everything else fixed, but if we can't make this run, there's no point in touching anything else, so... Oh, wow, okay. Well, that was the easiest carburetor I've ever taken off in my life. Looks pretty clean inside, but we'll take it inside and see what's up with this guy. Clearly something. Here you go, Jesse, I got you something. Yeet! So I just got the carburetor off, and I noticed that little stick right there. I was like, is that a valve or something? It actually looks to be a... A primer for the uh, fuel pump and if you listen really closely you can hear it working so our fuel pump works I just don't know why it wasn't working we'll play with that though 
the state. All right, that's our one blown hydraulic hose. I must say I'm impressed we've only lost one, but I must also follow that sentence up with so far. Huzzah. That's not going to be cheap. All right, let's go get it fixed. All right, well, our tire slime didn't work, as you can tell, so we're gonna have to take this off and take it to town. I have some big farm sockets. None of those even fit, so once again, we literally have to rely on the giant pliers. <laughs> God damn it, it did it again. It works just fine. All right, well, let's get this tire off. Well, I knew this season was going too easy. We finally ran into our first farmer size problem with a piece of equipment, and I could not get the center pin out at all. I've completely flattened off the backside at this point. The threads are gone. At this point, we've moved into welder and torch territory. I don't have either of those, so... Uh Well, we got it off. That sucked. It took an hour and a half of bashing it with a hammer, pulling it on the pry bars. And every little bit of heat my map gas torch had. But we got it. Now we just gotta go find a tire. Or a tube, even. It's now time to see what's going on with our carburetor. And it looks pretty much absolutely perfect inside. Uh oh. <laughs> Why you no worky? I suspect a needle and seat issue. That works better than most new ones. I am suspect of, of you, I guess, as the jet. I don't know, I mean, this cast iron doesn't really, not really a lot to go on here. Yeah, that all seems to operate absolutely perfectly. So, what the hell? The grass has grown a foot under the machine. It's been a month and the field looks like a CRP plot. We've been very busy with a bunch of car related stuff since this is a car channel, but it's finally way past time for us to spray the field. Uh, I took our, I don't even know if we mentioned this, but we had to hammer the spindle out to get that wheel off and it completely obliterated it. So I had to take it down to the shop. They machined it to take a new nut. Uh, we're gonna see if that works. So step one today is finally get that tire on the front somewhere around here there's a hydraulic line for this thing i think the carburetor's still sitting on the bench basically figure out where we left off put it all back together and see if this thing finally drives around the yard and pumps any water did we leave an engine completely open in the rain i mean it was already seized once so we've clearly shown that's not a huge problem let's get this some bitch back together it might work we gotta turn it way down to be a whole nother nut size so it's all too small but that doesn't matter <laughs> we just need to work a little all right i think that's gonna do it thank you midwest cylinder head for making that one possible Okay, there's a new choke cable, carburetor's on, fuel system's hooked up, uh, new tires on, new hydrostat line is on, hydraulic line, excuse me. Let's go find a battery, throw it in there, and see if this thing runs any better than it did last time, which was horrible. Yes.
going to call that good enough. Uh, let's fill our gas can up, take it up front, fill it up, see if our water pump works. I don't really know what we changed, but it runs a lot better. <laughs> piece of crap. Let's get the water hose over here see if we need to flush out any stuff from the bottom of the tank and then uh, see if this thing fills up and works. I can't help but notice the smoke behind you. I won't worry about that little guy. Some plain water in here see if we've got any leaks see if this plan's even gonna work. I mean there's a sizable chance that it just all dumps on the ground immediately or the pump doesn't run. And we just call the neighbors. Like we should have a month ago. One thing for sure. I can help a diesel tank when we're done. Alright, water pump test number one. <laughs> It's trying to, but I think it's seized. Is the pump spinning? No. Okay, that's the problem. Let's uh, address that. All right, this is our pump. Oh, Jesus, yep, nope. The agitator spins, but it ain't him. Our pump is seized up. All right, back to the backyard. We'll take it off, see if we can make it spin. Everything is fine. Hey, can I have some of that water? Thanks, one for you. Some for me. There we go. So about calling the neighbors. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good idea. I hate this. This thing's the biggest pile of shit I have ever worked on. Like I thought Wisconsin engines are great and they, they probably are in better shape, but apparently this one's just the most finicky thing I've ever touched. We literally tried to drive it from the front yard and broke down four times, and then it just burst into flames. <laughs> All this just to check if we can unseize the pump and make this ever work in the first place. Come on, you pile of trash. Activate, go. Ten feet closer. Losing my mind, maybe. <laughs> now the battery said goodbye. Yeah. Okay, had to get creative there, but pump is off as I was taking yeah that as I was taking it off a whole bunch of antifreeze poured out so I don't want to say we're completely screwed just yet so she's probably just got a bunch of rust in the veins ow 
actually, you know what? Haha! <laughs> Put all that back together! Ta da! <laughs> I'll fill this with some penetrance and then we'll go wash it out of the hydrant. Come on. Work with me here. Run! Check that out. How cool is that? We need to make sure it's really clear so that it uh, doesn't get any rust up into the rest of the system. But. Seals are so good and everything. Hell yeah. Keep rinsing this all off a little bit. We'll put her back on. Try it again. Our pump is quote unquote rebuilt. Our belts and everything are back on. Got our hoses hooked back up. Let's see if this son bitch will run now and uh, see if the pump works. I guess. I mean, I know it does, but let's watch water fly everywhere, essentially. Alright, ready? So we have one boom, uh, the left one. Nothing else, wanted to move any fluids. <laughs> so... So we're gonna have the left half of the field done. Well, actually, the left boom and the hand sprayer on the right side. I am suspicious of these valves. Ooh, I think I'm right to be suspicious of these valves. Oh yeah, I am. I am absolutely right. <laughs> Holy balls. There's a little bit of hunk of gunk in there. It's, See if we can get it to come out. I was right. Was some very dark water at first. Well, yeah, it was full of rust. Yep. Yummy, yummy rust. This is the one that had like a little coming out the back, supposedly. Uh, yeah, I think Jesse found it. It's all of this. So. <laughs> all right, well, let's try it right here. Four, baby. All of our lines work. Our pump moves water. The engine's actually kind of running now. 
That'll probably change once I move it. Let's go down to the neighbors and find a bunch of fittings, eh? They said they got a bucket of old sprayer parts. Boy, I hope they weren't kidding. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's the next day. Or four. I don't remember. The corn's grown a lot. The weeds have grown more. We are running out of time to get this done. So today, or this morning, I guess I should say, we're throwing the extra fittings and shit that we got for this thing on and getting all our lines cleared out the rest of the way. And then we should be good to start doing some test runs, fill it up with chemical, and hit the field. It was a pain in the butt to find all these old style sprayer fittings. All the neighbors were like, yeah, we got sprayers, come on, dig through the parts bucket. And believe it or not, what I hadn't accounted for is that sprayers have evolved a little bit since these came out. And with that, the sprayer tips have changed. But thankfully, we were able to go down to Mills Fleet Farm of all places. And they had the jets, the caps, the filters, the nozzles, the tees, all of it. So we have everything we need to get this sucker put together. So we will do that. And then we'll be back once we get this thing all cleared out and make it a good pattern. Whee! All right, Jesse, are you ready for a full systems test? Yes, I am. All right. It's been an hour. We've been cleaning out all the hoses. Let's see if we got them working. Look, we have quite a bit more cleaning to do. <laughs> Although this one arm that we've ran the most is doing great. Good, that's awesome. Well, let's finish that up, get those things all running really nice and consistently. And then we have one more step before we dump chemical in, figure out our flow rates and hit the field. Oh. I said there's one thing left, I lied, there's two. Uh, as you've probably noticed, it's been a reoccurring theme this entire video that we get about 10 minutes out of this or less when it fires up initially and then about three minutes every time after that. And I noted that this was as if it was getting warm and shutting off each time. And every time we would lose spark. And I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. And finally, off camera a little bit ago, I discovered that right here, there's a little temp sensor on the top of the head. And it's wired directly to the distributor. So what's happening is every time that gets hot enough that it closes circuit and grounds our spark out to the block and it shuts the engine off. It's an over temp shut off. Sure enough, we unplug that and everything starts working. But doing that, we started to get really hot and this thing started to smell warm and I knew it was gonna go into nuclear meltdown in the middle of the field. And if we've got $800 worth of the chemical sloshing around in the tank, not worth doing. So if you'll note right here, and I think we may have discussed this earlier, uh, there's a big rust hole and we had talked about all the mouse crap that was up in the engine shrouds and we had talked about taking them off and cleaning them out but we just we thought yeah we'll get by with it so far we're not getting by with it so we're going to take these engine shrouds off real quick and get all that mouse crap out of there and then this thing should finally be able to breathe and pull air through and cool our cylinder heads and we'll be ready to hit the field after the one other thing which you'll see here in a second oh yeah no wonder that was getting so warm. Yeah, I'll keep taking these shrouds up and get all this cleaned out and then we'll be back. Holy hell. We got all of our poop out. We're gonna fire this thing up and let it eviscerate the rest. blowing air through here pretty good. Yeah, she's not gonna be overheating anymore. No. All right, let's get her all put back together, finish up our last little bit of spice, and figure out some flow rates and stuff. There we go, done.
someone came up with that and put it in the comments so whoever that was thank you that was a brilliant suggestion and jesse thank you for making it happen so with that our sprayer is pretty much ready to hit the field i say pretty much because i'm pretty sure every 30 seconds we're gonna have to clean a nozzle for the next 40 years until all the rust is out of them but mechanically we should be all good to go i went over to the neighbors got ourselves a whole bunch of chemicals and stuff to uh, use to kill all the weeds and stuff but for the rest of today i believe we are going to be doing some test runs and a bunch of math figuring out flow rates pressures and speeds as well as mix ratios or something like that ladies and gentlemen i present to you the enola spray well done sir Thank in the meantime i found a chart on the back of the thing with the jets and looked at some numbers and said mm, yes 40 psi at four mile an hour and whatever happens happens so i think we're going to be doing that tomorrow <laughs> so much for that corn good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to spray day today is the day we're going to rain hell upon our enemies in the field with the enola spray it's time to mix all this in and hope we don't burn the hell out of the corn we've got three chemicals of various types i don't know what any of them do i'm going to dump them all in that hole and then we're going to use the agitator and return system built in the sprayer to mix it all up let's do that we got about 100 gallons in here we're only doing about four acres so we should have 20 gallons left i got some stuff to spray afterwards if we do have some left what i'm afraid of is running out let me go random milky looking chemical that's questionable they actually just gave us three gallons of paint hey that idiot neighbors <laughs> all the dumb farming stuff wants some chemicals i uh, just give them three gallons of paint just paints all the corn white you know what we'll just fire it up and mix it a little between each one <laughs> So welcome to the cockpit of the Enola spray. We have our speedometer. This thing works. This thing does it. Never has. Uh, we have our pressure gauge. Our lights don't work. Our on off. And, oh, yep. Starter. Thank you. This here is our main valve. It's bypass slash pressure regulator. This is my valve for my wand. If I ever want to spray anything in specific that's off on the side. This is my clutch engagement. This is my steering wheel, believe it or not. And then this is my left boom, center boom, and right boom. I need the pliers to run those, which is where Jesse's running right now. Down here, I've got two brakes. Behind me, we've got one through three and reverse on the transmission. And of course, the water pump engagement right here, which I need to disengage. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on with this damn thing. Oh, and of course, 
throttle, uh, left and right swing up and down, and the tilt, the leveling for each side. So a lot of knobs to be controlling at four mile an hour. Uh, I hope this goes well. All right, let's get some chemical moving through this thing.
thing I've done in my life. I'm, I'm somehow bleeding and cut. I don't think any chemical is touching the grass. Holy shit, dude, there's so much going on at once and you're trying to do it all at four mile an hour. I don't even know if our jets are flowing. I have no idea. Something tells me the corn's all gonna die and the weeds will do great and I'll have the neighbors spray it anyway. Holy fuck, dude, this is horrible. That was absolutely the most stressful thing I've ever done in my life. To the guys that ran these, like a lot back in the day, you're an absolute legend. Four mile an hour in a cornfield is way more than I had anticipated. It sounds like a teeny little number, but there's you're trying to keep your booms level, make sure everything's running. I never once even looked to see if all of our jets are still working. I don't know. The chances are that those two plugged up again and we're gonna have two stripes of corn that survive. The wind's picked up pretty bad. Uh, this thing doesn't quite have the pressure, I think, to break through the leaves in a lot of spots. So we're gonna wait until this afternoon when the wind dies down and spray the rest. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it'll be an absolute miracle if we kill a single weed in this field. It turns out it's only gonna get windier throughout the day. It's now or never. There we go. Which one? I am out here spraying all nimbly bimbly like. And it is indeed plugged. Hey, that might have done it. God damn it, it's hot in this duck suit. These are going better than we thought. We figured we'd be here every like 60 seconds.
and gentlemen, we've either miraculously done it just right, killed none of the weeds, or burned all of the corn. And on that bombshell, we'll be ending today's episode of Junkyard Digs. Thank you very much for joining us for the Sprayer Revival Part 2, where the Enola spray took to the fields in a horrible fashion and was honestly the worst thing I've ever had to do for a video slash any driving experience of my life. With that being said, we'll see you right here next week for another episode of Junkyard Digs. Thank you for leaving a comment below, a like, subscribing, and turning the bell on. I'm gonna go take a shower now. Peace. Holy shit. <laughs>